Remember the time we all had no idea who Logan Paul was? Ah, the good old days. In Logan Paul fashion, he shows why he is a massive piece of shit. Morning, Logan Gang was pop. They're all douchebags on YouTube who got popular by being douchebags on YouTube for children. So this is a twenty-one thousand dollars seat, first class on the Emirates. I liked his uh, forest video, that was quite entertaining. I'm assuming he had a little bit of foresight that this would have some backlash. Uh, why? It's sinking in, bro. It was all, it was gonna be a joke. Yeah. This was all gonna be a joke. <laughs> why did it become so real? Is it possible for Logan Paul to make a comeback? Or am I gonna be a failed YouTuber? There's absolutely no doubt about it. At one point in time, Logan Paul was one of the most hated YouTubers on the entire platform, surpassed possibly by only his own brother, Jake Paul. Logan, he, he's like the nice one of the Paul brothers. He's the, he's the more mature one. No. <laughs> He's not. When you heard the name Logan Paul, you'd think of an obnoxious, insensitive creator who was making over-the-top content for a young audience he didn't even relate to. Loud, crass, distasteful. He's just generally cringy and annoying. He's an asshole, a hypocrite, and cares only about fame. And after hitting an apex during a stroll in one of Japan's most renowned forests, Logan Paul's reputation dropped to a level so low that there were questions as to whether or not his reputation would ever recover. Well, not only did Logan's reputation recover from rock bottom, it's somehow gone well beyond recovery, to the point where the people who used to hate him have now become his biggest fans. Not gonna lie, I used to hate Logan Paul, but he's grown on me. He's actually a lot more mature now, and I respect him for that. I hate to say it too, man, Logan Paul has grown on me too. Anyone else starting to find Logan's content more and more entertaining? I actually have mad respect for him and actually like him now. I'm pretty sure we all respect Logan now and have changed our point of view on him. Logan Paul has somehow done the unthinkable, taken an awful reputation tarnished by what is still widely considered to be the worst thing an influencer has ever done, and turned it into one of the most commendable redemption stories ever seen on the platform. But the real question is, how did such a transition occur? Logan Paul's reputation in the beginning was neutral. Nobody knew him. He had no social media following, no public image, and no fans or haters. He was simply a college student studying industrial engineering in Ohio. However, this would change following the release of the social media platform Vine in 2013, a platform that Logan would join and begin making content on. I'm tired. I like turtles. I like eggs. Watermelon. <laughs> After beginning his journey as a Viner in late 2013, Logan Paul would begin to gain a reputation as an extroverted, outgoing, confident creator who was willing to put himself out there in order to gain a following. Sorry, I'm late. What, wait a minute, wrong car. What? Don't do this to me, Dad. While most of his videos were sketches done in private, a lot of his content was humorous because it involved annoying other individuals in a public domain. How much? How much? <laughs> this annoyance of other individuals in a public domain boosted Logan's popularity significantly, but would also begin to erode his reputation instantly as people began to see him as somewhat immature. Yeah, this is pretty overbearing and obnoxious. If he wasn't blonde and good looking, he would have surely gotten into some trouble. Narcissism. 10 years from now when his looks fade, he's gonna be stuck with that ego and not know what to do with his life. As Logan started to gain low levels of popularity, he began appearing in interviews about his popularity on Vine, which would begin to reveal his over-the-top ego as well as his alpha jock-like 18-year-old personality. You know, I'm, I'm the guy that kids go, oh my god, I cannot believe he did that. So I'm, I'm their way to be like, wow. This kid, this, he's got some balls, like yeah. why, he's doing this. And I'm just like, yeah, it's, it's fun, you know? Logan's huge ego mixed with his borderline immature personality resulted in many older viewers seeing him as a massive douchebag. However, the younger audience perceived him to be extremely entertaining for the same reasons that the older audience disliked him. The ultimate result of this was that Logan began to create content that appealed to the younger audience. And since the younger audience liked the obnoxious over the top content, Logan would become more obnoxious in order to appeal to this audience. Bless you, bless as Vine started to lose steam, Logan would migrate over to YouTube. I'm moving outside of Vine now, which is great. That was my overall goal when I started. And um, I mean, I'm so glad it's finally happening and YouTube's like, you know, facilitating that. And since YouTube favored lengthy, engaging videos as opposed to Vine's short, punchy videos, Logan would have to change his content style. Welcome to my vlog channel. That's right, I'm vlogging now. You get to see more of me. <laughs> Sick, right? <laughs> Considering that by this point, Logan had become more of a celebrity than a content creator, vlogs would become his main video choice, which gave him the ability to constantly display the insanity of his lifestyle while also remaining entertaining for his fans. And while the vlogs proved to be entertaining 
entertaining for his existing audience, they really didn't do him any favors for his reputation amongst those who already disliked him. Logan's YouTube vlogs brought his ego to the surface, which was then displayed for a period of around 15 minutes every single day. On top of this, Logan's vlog was less like David Dobrik or Casey Neistat's vlog, where they were constantly incorporating others in order to make it look a little less self-centered. Logan just went all out in making the vlogs specifically about him and his own life. My mom is still in town. I'm on 60 Minutes tonight at 7 p.m. on CBS. Plug, plug, plug. So we're gonna have a little watch party for that. Which once again displayed his ego, making him more hated amongst the YouTube community. Finally, constantly displaying and flexing your wealth probably wasn't the smartest strategy if the goal was to appear as a humble, respectable adult. Four by four, squared, G-Wagon, raised. Which once again led to further disrespect from the YouTube community. However, it's hard to determine whether or not this hate was such a bad thing. Because as Logan Paul became more and more hated, videos began to pop up here and there, either parodying him. Uh, oh, oh. Or just simply talking about how much of a douchebag he was. It's a YouTube movie that stars Logan Paul and douchebags like Logan Paul. All this did was give Logan more exposure. And while it often created more fans for Logan, it also created as many, if not more, haters. Considering the imperfections within his videos are being pointed out by other creators considered to have authority in the YouTube community. As a whole, this made Logan more and more known, further increasing his subscriber count. However, the problem with getting more famous is that all it does is gives people more of a reason to hate you. And it wasn't only Logan that was becoming more and more famous, it was also his brother Jake who had been making waves on the YouTube platform. The only problem with this, Jake was arguably more hated than Logan Paul. 10 reasons why Logan Paul is hated. Ego, 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 related to Jake Paul, ego, 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 ego. People began to associate Logan with his younger brother Jake purely because they came from the same bloodline. Those who knew and hated Jake already naturally took the same approach for Logan, assuming they were similar, which let's be honest at the time they were basically a carbon copy of each other. Considering that by mid-2017, Jake Paul had already hit 10 million subscribers, this was far from ideal for Logan. And meanwhile, as Logan got more and more famous, passing 5 million, 10 million, 15 million subscribers, he became aware of the fact that he was somewhat hated and considered a villain by the large majority of the YouTube landscape. However, rather than trying to change his personality and display himself with more likable characteristics, he instead began to double down on the image of being one of YouTube's most hated creators. Becoming a obsessed with the idea of being a villain. When the whole world hates you, I just I I made the conscious decision I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the guy they think I am. His ego, self-centered attitude, and insensitivity to those around him only continued to increase. Logan Paul's insensitivity began to cross the US border, being taken to countries such as Italy, Mamma mia, someone find me the pasta! Where's the pepperoni? France, and eventually Japan, a location at which Logan would post what his audience perceived to be an incredibly culturally insensitive vlog, which ultimately resulted in backlash from the YouTube landscape at large. His loud, disrespectful and obnoxious. However, by this point, Logan couldn't care less about backlash. It was simply about pushing the boundaries to their absolute limits. I'm also still the guy who takes things to extremes. That's, I mean, that's, that's who I am. That's the brand of Logan Paul. However, pushing the boundaries over and over eventually moved the boundaries to a place where Logan would do the unthinkable, dropping his reputation to a point where nobody could envision it ever recovering. Two years ago, I fell in love with the idea of, um, for New Year's, slowing it down, like going somewhere that's really isolated, and instead of going out or partying, um, kind of like sort of finding myself. And so we're in Tokyo, Japan, right? I figured this was the perfect time to do it, because if you look to my right, Lo Gang, I give you the Aoki Gahara Fork. The event was so iconic that it barely requires an explanation. On the 31st of December 2017, Logan Paul would upload the infamous Akigahara Forest Vlog, in which he would film a recently deceased person and upload it as if it were just any other vlog. And while Vice made somewhat of a similar video back in 2012, it was slightly more professional as the reporter wasn't running around in a $7,500 Gucci jacket, wearing a Toy Story alien hat, and trying to hold back laughter throughout the video. <laughs> I just got the God damn it. Within 24 hours, the video had gained 6.3 million views, and as many of you might guess or remember, the backlash was absolutely insane. This is probably one of the worst things I've ever seen uploaded to YouTube before. Just one story that is so insane, 
and so bad. Logan Paul knew what he was going to see. He also knew what he was going to capture on film and upload to his YouTube channel. A YouTuber that has respect for people like this would turn off the camera, go home. So it seems the main antagonist this season will be this douche noodle wearing the alien hat. His name's Logan Paul. He has thinning blonde hair. So it's Logan would remove the video two days later, replacing it with a video titled So Sorry, Apologizing for the Forest Video. I should have never posted the video. I should have put the cameras down. However, this video wouldn't do much for his reputation receiving a 70% dislike ratio. By this point, it was safe to say that Logan's reputation had hit an all time low, with many saying that his career was completely over. However, fortunately for Logan, when you hit rock bottom, the only way to go is up. And it would be around the same point in time that Logan's reputation would strangely begin to recover. After taking a month off to process the backlash, Logan would upload a video titled Logan Paul is Back, where from the get go, he would treat him almost being cancelled from YouTube as a massive joke. Delete Logan Paul's YouTube channel, check it out. 533,029 have signed. Well, I'm gonna make sure this gets to 533,030 right now because I'm signing it. Because, uh, Logan Paul, right? <laughs> and while it was still somewhat insensitive, this displayed Logan's overwhelming confidence he had for the future of his channel. And considering that if he was willing to sign a petition for the deletion of his own channel, he clearly couldn't care less about what anyone thought of him. Almost a million comments, I will say, half of them are telling me to go get run over by a car. But that's engagement, bro. I'll take it. The fact that Logan Paul seemed totally unaffected by the event kind of led his audience to think of it as not such a big deal. Kind of the opposite of Shane Dawson or Call Me Carson, both of whom passively displaying how bad the drama affected them by disappearing off the internet. As opposed to Logan, who just sat back with the attitude of, yeah, who cares? It's, it's kind of funny in retrospect, and at least I learned something from it. Within a month, it seemed as though everyone was over it. Logan Paul would then upload a video titled Suicide side be here tomorrow, in which Logan explained that he planned on personally contributing in order to help the cause. So I'm pledging to donate $1 million to various suicide prevention organizations with the first $250,000 going immediately to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline so they can increase their capacity to help those in need. Now, it's hard to say whether or not Logan showed a shroud of genuine remorse for the event. However, that's irrelevant. The whole scenario forced him to reconsider what was appropriate to post and ultimately helped him to take on a slightly more respectable persona. But Logan was still still far from being perceived as mature and respectable. However, within a month of his return and the Japanese forest video already being in the rearview mirror, Logan would announce an event that ultimately forced him to further drop his ego, leading him to be liked by more of the broader community. Jake Paul, Logan Paul, any of the Pauls, I don't care, bring it. Same, On the 3rd of February 2018, after winning his amateur boxing match against Joe Weller, KSI would call out the Paul family in an attempt to engage in a boxing match with either of the brothers. And while Logan initially responded with his typical immature self by stating that he was going to get his dad to take the fight. Apparently he'd fight any of the Pauls. If he wants to fight me, I'm totally on board. I'll whip his ass. He would reveal less than a month later that he would in fact be fighting KSI. Yes. It looks like I am fighting KSI. And while the event was arguably hyped as one of the most significant events in YouTube history, Logan Paul versus KSI, this is what I want to see! The broader significance it had as a turning point for Logan Paul's reputation was far more notable. Now, while the way he was acting during his vlogs might have suggested otherwise, Logan Paul was far from stupid. There's a chance this pig is smarter than me. He knew how to appeal to an audience better than anyone else. His over-the-top obnoxious douchey attitude was no coincidence. He was doing it to appeal to his younger audience. However, with the boxing match between him and KSI becoming a main piece of Logan Paul's content, perhaps he understood, at least on an unconscious level, that he would have to approach the event with a slightly higher level of maturity, given that the average age of the audience would be higher than in the vlogs. And while, once again, Logan was still very far from being a mature, respected YouTuber, there was a clear shift in his level of maturity following the announcement of the first KSI fight. Point is, I'm gonna be so ready for this fight. KSI, bro, you see the title, man. You just, you, you don't have a chance of winning. And then later, I'm... It would also be around the same time that Logan would begin to regularly hang out with another individual who would be vital in his journey for becoming a more respected YouTuber. Your hair has grown brittle. You've grown taller. You've gotten more muscular. You've got Mike Mylock and Logan Paul had met way back in 2014, however would start hanging out and training regularly leading up to the fight with KSI. Mike was already in his 30s by this point and naturally had a significantly more mature attitude than Logan at the time. It was stated that during Logan's vlogging peak, he had simply surrounded himself with yes men, who would never question his behavior. However, after hanging out with different individuals such as Mike, Logan would be forced to question his immature attitude as well as the way he had previously approached certain scenarios. You're too corporate for a non-corporate world. I don't have corporate. The 
nothing is going to get done. Yes, I it will. will. Yes, it will. Yes, it I will. will. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch Touching me. you. Which eventually led Mike being nicknamed the babysitter who helps Logan Paul stay out of trouble. Judge has it. 57, 57, it is a majority draw. Neither Logan or KSI won that first fight. It was a draw. However, perhaps that wasn't such a bad thing because there seemed to be somewhat of a further adjustment in Logan's ability to suppress his ego and appear more humble when talking about the outcome of the fight. To everyone who came to the Manchester Arena and supported me and Jake, to everyone who watched online legally. However, the end of the fight was far more significant than a slight humbling of Logan Paul because Logan now had more time on his hands during which he would begin planning a new internet endeavor. And this new endeavor would be one of the most significant when it came to repairing his reputation and gaining respect from the wider YouTube audience. Hey yo, what is up? My name is Logan Paul, controversial YouTube star, boxer, ex-vegan, and now I guess podcaster? What? What? Welcome to Impulsive, the most thought-provoking, mentally stimulating podcast on the planet. In November 2018, Logan Paul would launch the Impulsive podcast with Mike as the co-host. After months of preparation and due diligence, guys, I give you the brand new Impulsive podcast. Hey. Now, there are a few elements of this podcast that made it so Logan was almost forced to increase his level of maturity from the second that the venture was launched. Firstly, the guests that were being interviewed were often high status individuals in serious fields such as sex experts, adult film stars, and even individuals like Steve-O from Jackass. It's Steve-O. Stop. Holy. Considering Logan was interviewing more mature guests, and many had to adopt a more mature attitude in order to match their vibe, otherwise the conversation would have just felt clunky. Secondly, Logan's former over-the-top douchey obnoxious attitude just didn't really adapt very well to a podcast setting. It worked well in a vlog setting because everything was fast and punchy, but for an hour-long conversation, Logan had to relax a little bit and take on a chilled-out attitude, which helped his likability drastically. And I don't have any evidence for this next statement, so I could be totally wrong here, but the ultimate result of Logan's slight change in his personality was that the average age of his viewer appeared to increase from children to maybe teens and early adults, which would make sense considering long-form podcasts generally appeal to an older audience anyway. For this reason, Logan would also rebrand his vlogs from the no longer drawn-out, douchey, overhyped content for children to more mature vlogs with genuinely well-thought-out comedic content. Hey, this is Phil from the Small Wiener Club. Uh, sorry to get back to you so late. I just finished reviewing your application and information you sent in, but I am sorry to say that I don't think I can allow you to join our I mean, the sheer girth and juiciness alone is ridiculous. It does appear that you're going to have to take that ginormous schmeat uh, somewhere else. Best of luck to you. On top of this, Logan would also implement various adult film stars once again pandering the content to an older audience, which also showed obvious demonetization risk likely adding to further respect for Logan Paul. From this point onwards, the comments just became more and more about how much they now liked Logan Paul. I'm starting to enjoy his content and I don't know how I feel. No one. Everyone, I love Logan Paul's new content. I actually like his content now. This is strange times. And therefore, Logan would continue to post these more respectable videos and his reputation slowly began to fix itself over time. On the 4th of April 2020, Logan would upload a video on the Impulsive Clips channel titled Logan Paul Reflects on His Past Self, which basically summarized the insane character development of Logan Paul between 2017 and 2020. Back in the day, the idea was just flex show people how great i am be a, a cocky confident arrogant um loud boisterous prick and draw attention it was like shock value was the, the the way to break into the homes of millions of people through the internet and since i was on the the way up and up and on the way bottom bottom i've seen both sides and now i can move with grace and humility and um and, 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 and energy of of complacency while still being hungry this has been how logan paul completely overhauled his reputation please like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you for watching